here's what I want to tell you. Majority of the people who say that cryptocurrencies don't mean anything and are going to zero, I don't think they spent a lot of time understanding the underlying technology attached to it. Because I would always think about Bitcoin as the currency. I would always think about Bitcoin that, okay, I'll invest a small portion of it. If it becomes the currency of the future, I have a position. And if it becomes nothing at all, okay lang sa akin. Hey guys, so in this video, I want to talk about risks that you're supposed to take when you start to invest. So when we talk about investing, a lot of people are so scared to take risks that they don't even invest at all. And I'll say this over and over, and I know you've heard a lot of people say this, that the greatest risk is not taking any risk at all. Because at the end of the day, if you play it safe, you minimize your upside. If you play it safe also, you will be eaten up by inflation. If you play it safe, there will be other people who will be taking advantage and maximizing the opportunities that should have been yours as well. And playing it safe is okay in certain circumstances because at the end of the day, we're not all the same. Some of you will be more risk averse. But at the end of the day also, if you are risk averse, it doesn't mean that you should not take any risk because every time you don't take any risk, you minimize your upside. Anytime you don't take any risk, you remove the chance for you to grow whatever you have. If you put your assets into something that's safe, it's true that there's a very, very big chance that you won't lose your money, but there's a very, very big chance also that later on, when you are in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the money that you placed into something that's safe won't be able to help you anymore because its value will be something that's very, 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 very low. And this is what I say in terms of taking risk. Anytime you invest into something, there will always be a risk attached to it. Even if you put it in a bank, please remember, in the Philippines, it's true that when you put it in the bank, the bank will close, you get 500 pesos PDIC insured. But what if your money is more than 500,000? Think about it this way. If your expenses is 50,000 a month, multiplied by 10, it's 500,000. That means if you want to have assets that will protect you more than 10 months, if you want to have savings and emergency fund that's more than a year, then that actually means that 500,000 PDIC insured would give you that amount of security. Of course, you can put in and open different banks to give you 500, 500, 500, 500 to get the protection that you need but at the end of the day as your assets get larger as you start earning more you will have more than 500,000 pesos and at the end of the day you will be subjecting yourself also to risk please remember anytime you also deploy capital even if it's risk-free there will always be an amount of risk attached to it I guess the biggest advantage for bank accounts that is regulated by the Banco Central, there are tighter measures to protect you as well risk is a function of what you don't know Risk also is a function that, okay, if you took the time to study it, you will already figure out if that asset, that investment was something that's for you. Because if you realize that, okay, I study it, these are the possibilities of how I lose money in this particular investment. The next question you always ask yourself is, okay, this is how I lose money. Is this something for me? If the answer is no, no matter if the risk is this much or this much, then you're not supposed to go into it. It will always go back to how much you studied. It will always go back to, okay, I studied it. I understand it. I know these are the possibilities for me to actually lose money. But at the end of the day, you will always have to make a decision based on the information that's in front of you. You will always have to make a decision based on what you've studied. And a lot of people invest based on headlines. A lot of people invest based on what's labeled as risky and not risky. Okay, that's a good classification of investing. However, if you want to really take control over your finances, you have to go beyond the headlines. You have to go beyond what's said. You have to do your own due diligence. Because totoo, even if you enter any other type of investment that's not guaranteed, there will always be volatility. And think about it. People classify bonds as something that's safe. People classify corporate bonds as something that is in the risk spectrum ladder. It's at the lowest point. But there are chances also that even if you invest in corporate bonds, they will default. There's a possibility that also you don't get paid. There's a possibility also that you could also lose a portion of your investments. The likelihood of that is smaller because they're debt, they're corporate bonds. But I'm saying it's also possible. In the same way, when you go further to the spectrum, 
of cryptocurrencies as well. A lot of people will say that don't invest in cryptocurrencies because they're gonna go to zero. But here's what I want to tell you. Majority of the people who say that cryptocurrencies don't mean anything and are going to zero, I don't think they spent a lot of time understanding the underlying technology attached to it. Because I would always think about Bitcoin as the currency. I would always think about Bitcoin that, okay, I'll invest a small portion of it. If it becomes the currency of the future, I have a position. And if it becomes nothing at all, Okay lang sa akin. And that view alone was very, very wrong because the more I studied it, I saw Bitcoin not as a currency, I saw Bitcoin as technology, and I saw Bitcoin as a digital asset, I saw Bitcoin as digital property, I saw Bitcoin as a store of value. What's so interesting is that the headlines, the things that you see around you, are mostly good to read, but doesn't paint the whole picture. And that's why it's so important, especially for investments that are considered as risky. You just have to figure out what causes it to be risky. Why do people think it's something that's scary? And please remember this, people always equate risk and volatility. Volatility is basically the price fluctuating from a low point to a high point or a high point to a low point. And even the most stable companies in the US, the ones that have great products, great consumer base, a large stockpile of cash, billions in revenue, lots of customers still fluctuate, still drop, still are volatile. Think about downward movements to Apple. Apple, one of the largest brands, largest companies in the world, who has a ton, a stockpile of cash, still experience volatility. Anything that's not considered risk-free will always have volatility. Anything that's not considered safe will always have volatility. So why am I saying this? Volatility should also be your friend. Eh? Don't be scared just because it's labeled as something that's volatile. It means it's a bad investment. Volatility also means that when you see something drop, it's an opportunity for you to stack. When you see something drop, but it's something that is really, really good, really, really attractive, then that's an opportunity for you to buy more. Similar to what's happening right now, while I'm making this video, we're about to be in lockdown for Metro Manila in the next few days. And it's gonna happen very, very soon. And that being said, we've seen Philippine markets drop last week. Why? Because there was fear, there was uncertainty, there was doubt. There were fears that it may take longer for the economy to recover. And that's where also, to remove the fear, to remove the risk, you also need to match your timeline. Why am I saying this? Because the downward movements today won't matter if you're 25 years old. It won't matter if you don't need your money in the next 35 years. Think about it very, very well. If you're 25, if you're 30 years old, and you have stable income, money is coming your way, you have savings, you're deploying capital into an asset that you won't probably touch because you have other streams of income and you're not trying to get rich in the next eight minutes. Downward moves today in 2021 won't matter 25 years later. Downward moves today won't mean a thing, but it will mean something if you don't panic. It will mean something if the downward moves allow you and create an opportunity for you in order for you to be able to add some more, in order for you to be able to build the base. Please remember, if your time horizon is long and you're doing it well and you're doing it properly and you have the right strategy towards investing, risks, downward volatility, allow you to be able to buy more, especially for the good ones. So think about it. Over the past few days, there were a lot of conglomerates in the Philippine stock market that dropped massively. There were a lot of companies that had good reputations, good credit rating, had lots of cash, were run by good people that dropped. This pandemic will end. It may not be this year, it may not be next year, it may not be two years from now, but it will. And if your time horizon is long and you know the risks that are attached to it, then why should you be scared? Those that get scared in times of volatility are those who don't study. Those who get scared when times get shaky are those who came in just because people told them to come in. And that's not what this channel is all about and that's not what I want you to be. What I want you to be is to be the ones that know how to decide whether that investment is for them or not for them. And that's why it's so interesting that as much as I love talking about the stock market and as much as I've loved talking about cryptos and NFTs right now, at the end of the day, if it doesn't fit you, it doesn't fit your risk tolerance, then don't go for it. It doesn't matter. What matters is you keep your peace of mind and then you deploy it into something that you know and you understand. And here's the thing though, if the stock market and the crypto market and NFTs don't work for you, and then you've also tried to figure out mutual funds, VUL, Forex, and then you figured out it's not also the way for you, then probably you need to be an entrepreneur, which if you analyze it further, there's a greater degree of risk. Because think about it, if you enter the Forex market and you don't leverage, then your money won't go to zero. If you go to the stock market and you don't leverage, you don't short, 
your money won't go to zero, provided that you invest in a really, really good company. When you go into mutual funds, especially index funds, your money won't go to zero. But if you start your own business, there's a very, very big chance that it would go to zero. If you invest in a friend's business, especially if it's a startup and they're doing the business for the first time, there's a very, very big chance that that could go also to zero. So when people say the stock market, the crypto market, the forex market, mutual funds, VULs are very risky, think about it. It's riskier to start your own business. It's riskier to invest into a startup because that can go to zero. But I'll just end it with this. Risk in investing will always be a function of how much you study. Your reward, your earnings will always be a byproduct of how much risk you take. The smaller the risk that you're taking, for sure the reward the earnings that you can get will also be smaller. Nothing wrong with that because if you're faithful and do that over a period of time, I believe that's gonna get bigger. However, those that are willing to take bets that are riskier than what majority of the market, majority of the population is not taking, they are the ones that will reap the benefits of it. And just to think about it, no, I had a lot of friends that started investing in cryptocurrencies earlier than me. Hearing their stories 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, when a lot of people did not believe in it, when a lot of people were laughing at them, when a lot of people were saying that <laughs> you're just wasting your time and money and effort into that, they're the ones that are doing massively well today because of the risks that they took when majority of the population were not taking it. Now, that being said, please remember this. That's what differentiates the 2% that are wealthy in the world. They're willing to take risks. They're willing to work harder than the entire 98%. So if you want to earn more than the 98% of the population, take risks that the 98% are not doing. If you want to be like the 98% of the population, then just do what everyone else is doing as well. Nothing wrong with that. You just have to do what works for you. So there. So I hope you guys got a lot from this. I have a stock market fundamental and technical analysis course happening over the next few weeks and months. Links are in the description below. I also have books that are available via Shopee. If you want to grab them, read them while we are in lockdown, check them out in the description below as well. If you want to trade US markets, go trade $1. If you want to trade cryptocurrency markets, Binance $50. And if you want to trade Forex markets, check out XM below. They have a 30 US dollar sign up that you can use when you trade with them as well. So check them out in the description below. But if you want more videos like this, like, share, subscribe, and smash the bell so you get updated every time I come up with new content about investing. So that's it for now. I hope you guys got a lot from this and I hope that this is something that helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon guys and God bless you all.